Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, and hello, Circleville, Circleville. And it's great to be back in Ohio to celebrate the return of Big Ten football with a big victory today for the Buckeyes, 52 to 17. Not bad. Not bad. You remember how this all happened? Sleepy Joe said, President Trump didn't want to have football. I said, what the hell is he talking about? Sleepy Joe. So I said, what's the problem with football? They said, Big Ten football is shut down. I said, well, he said I did it? Yeah, he blamed me. I said, I had nothing to do with it. So then I said, I got an idea. I'm going to get it open if it's shut down. Well, that's what happened. I think he even took an ad. President Trump shut down football. I didn't think about it, I must tell you. I'm thinking about China, and I'm thinking about a lot of other things. So I, I said, uh, you know what we'll do? We'll teach Sleepy Joe and that group that don't have what it takes. We'll teach them how to do it. And I worked hard to bring back Big Ten, and I got together with your commissioner. He did a good job. And we got it back, and today you won your football game, and we're very happy about it. Because I know that life in Ohio is not complete without the glory of Ohio State football and other football. Well, I'm glad you won the game. I wouldn't have wanted to come. Can you imagine if you lost the game? And you know, there's a lot of people in here, but did you see outside? You're very lucky to be here. Say thank you very much for this wonderful journey, President. No, you have to see. You have to see. There are tens of thousands of people in the streets out here trying to get in. I think the next time, the next time we'll get a larger field. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's it. That's really nice. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And by the way, we got Pac-12 back. I don't. You don't care about Pac-12, but we got Pac-12. We said we might as well do out there too, right? And we did a doubleheader. Ten days from now, we're going to win this great state, and we are going to win four more years in the White House. Remember last time about this state? Remember they said for a year I had to hear it. You cannot win unless you win the great state of Ohio. I heard it so many times. That was these fake people. Look at all of them over the camera. Look at all those cameras. Look at all those lights that are on. All those lights that are on. But do you remember that? They would drum it for a year. I heard, you cannot win unless you win Ohio. And then I got a poll, and it said, we're doing pretty well in Ohio, by the way, right? And then we won. Remember, they said, it's going to be close. It's going to be hard to win. Going to be very, very hard. And Trump, if he doesn't win Ohio, he's out. And then we not only won Ohio, we won Ohio by more than eight points. Eight points. And they said, and they said, you know the story when it, uh, when it closes? I mean, they do a fast little count if you're winning big. They said, the polls in Ohio have closed. Donald Trump has won the state of Ohio. It's like immediate. It was like in the same sentence. The polls have closed. Trump has won. You know, normally it would take, like, hours and whatever if it's close. No, we won big, and I hear we're winning big now, and I'm hearing they gave up on the state already, and you know they're going to give up on Florida very soon because we're winning big in Florida, we're winning big in North Carolina. You don't want Sleepy Joe to be your president. You know, he draws flies. He's not drawing anybody. And Obama was there. They called in Obama. They said, sir, sir, this is a few days ago, sir, I bad news, what? President Obama is going to campaign for Sleepy Joe. And I said, is that good news or bad news? <laughs> sure. And he said, uh, well, he's going to campaign. So I guess it started yesterday or the day before, right? They had 42 people show. 42! We have thousands, tens of thousands, and outside is five times what this is. Thousands, no. 
No, there's something going on. It's happened last time, four years ago. This time, more. It, this time, more. It happened last time. There was an enthusiasm four years ago, the likes of which the fake news has never seen before. Right? And I'll have to tell you, and maybe I'll be wrong, but at least to this point, the enthusiasm is much more because you know what we've all done together? We've done a lot. We've done it. We've done a lot. It's much more. It's much more. We got all those tax cuts. We got all the regulation cuts. We got the steel guys back. We put tariffs on all the crap that they were dumping from China, 25 percent. They were dumping the steel. Then we said, you can't do that. And lots of other things. We've done a lot. But it's far greater today. Look at this field. I mean, as far as the eye can see, it's far greater today than it was four years ago. And this is the most important election. This is the most important election of your lifetimes. I see a lot of young people up here, so big deal. Like what? 12 years. No. Big deal, right? It's really the most, it could be the most important election we've ever had. I really believe that, too. And I didn't think I'd be saying it because our last win was such a big win. We've done so much. Nobody's done more than what we've done. They don't even question it. You know when I say it? Because they like to always, oh, he did this, he said that, he said, you know. They don't even question it. We have done more in the first three and a half years than any administration has done. It's true. When you look at everything. And it's an honor, but this is the most important election. I didn't think I would say it because I, I viewed the last, uh, what we did four years ago. Can you believe four years ago? Almost. Can you imagine that? The time flies. I'll never forget the first night in the White House. I said, it's like a surreal experience. I have Abraham Lincoln's bedroom here. I was talking to the First Lady. I said, do you believe this? It took a little while. It takes a while to get used to it. And then, you know what you have to do? You have to get down to work. You get down to work, and that's what we did. At the debate this week, did anybody see the debate? Maybe. A couple of people. They had a lot. That was like a Super Bowl deal, I guess, uh, with the ratings. That's okay. And we had one poll, 91 to 9, it was. 91 to 9. With, with us having the 91, okay? Yeah. I kept saying, hey, Joe, Joe, you want to do all this stuff. Why didn't you do it? You were there three and a half years ago. Do it. Why didn't you do it, Joe? You didn't do much, Joe. Then I said, I wouldn't have run, Joe. I wouldn't have run if you did a good job. If you two did a good job, I wouldn't have run. I didn't need this, Joe. I had a very good life, Joe. I didn't need this, Joe. I had a good life. I had a very nice life, Joe, but I wouldn't have run. You did a good job. I wouldn't have run. And if I did, I wouldn't have won because you would have done a good job. There would have been no reason. The fact is, you didn't do a good job, Joe. You let us down, Joe. And he had no idea what I was talking about. He had no clue. <laughs> but at the debate this week, the American people saw the contrast between a 47-year career politician who used his public office to enrich himself. You know that. I mean, his son was like, his son was like a human vacuum cleaner. He just follow his. Let's go to China this week, Dad. Okay, son, here, little. Take out a billion and a half. You get all the fees at a billion and a half. How about going to Ukraine? Now, they'll pay me 183000 a month for my, for my great, great services on energy. What do you know about energy, son? I didn't know. I don't know anything, Dad, but I'll learn. I'm willing to learn. For the last half century, Joe Biden has been outsourcing your jobs, opening your borders, and sacrificing American blood and treasure in these endless, ridiculous foreign wars. Countries you've never even heard of, for the most part. I fight for the middle class. I fight for everyone. I fight for this country. And Biden doesn't know who he's fighting for. Now, you have to say, you know, this is serious stuff. It is. It is serious stuff. But is there any place better to be than a Trump rally? I mean, seriously, right? I mean, it's serious, but we have fun. And you know, the best way to succeed, you got to love what you're doing. And we all love it. And we love our country. We love our country. In 2016, Ohio voted to fire this depraved political establishment. 
And you elected an outsider as your president who is finally putting America first. That's what I'm doing. You work hard. You raise your families. You follow our laws. You support your church that you're not even allowed to go to. How about that? You can't go to your church, but you can have a riot down Fifth Avenue. Isn't that nice? You serve your community, and you give your love and loyalty to our great country. Now you finally have a president that is loyal to you, totally loyal to you. It's, believe me, there are easier ways to spend my life. This was — nobody told me the swamp was going to be that deep and that vicious. Easy. They even impeached me over a perfect phone call. Hello, how are you doing? Congratulations. Congratulations on your win, Mr. President of Ukraine. We're going to impeach him. These people are crazy. These people — oh, now they're doing it again. You know, the laptop from hell. They found the laptop from hell. This is a laptop that they don't want to see. How the hell this laptop got freed up? It's amazing the way God works. The laptop from hell. Right? And now it comes. It's Adam Shifty Schiff. Yesterday, I saw for the first time watermelon. He's shaped like a watermelon. Adam Schiff, dishonest guy, totally dishonest guy, made up my conversation, remember, in the halls of Congress, said quid pro quo eight times. I didn't say it at all. Isn't it lucky I had a transcriber? Isn't it lucky? Otherwise, it would be my word against Shifty Schiff. But think of it, think of it. So Adam Schiff, he's out there, and he's talking about what's taking place. And here it is, the laptop from hell. He said, it's Russia, Russia. Here we go again, Russia, Russia, Russia. I think Russia must look at us and say, these people are stone cold crazy. This is, this is Russian disinformation. I'll tell you what, we got to get back to business. This is crazy what's going on. This is crazy. Russia. I heard it yesterday. They got him caught. I think Biden, didn't he say the debate? He said, well, this was Russia disinformation. This is a disaster for them. But let's see what happens. But see, but we have learned a lot. We've learned how corrupt the media is. I already knew they were corrupt. But, but they don't want to write anything about it. So listen, so we caught them cold, just like we caught them spying on my campaign. We caught them doing horrible, treasonous things. These were treasonous things. Let's see what happens. Should have gone much faster, I have to be honest with you. But we caught them spying on our campaign, the whole group. And by the way, Obama and Biden, they knew everything about it. They knew everything about it. We caught them with that, too. It's much better if I say, no, 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 please. <laughs> now, it's terrible. It's a terrible thing. Now they're trying to do it again where they get caught. And they're trying to say it was Russia. They never say China. You know why a lot of money comes out of China into their pockets. And did you ever notice? China has not been very good. We did a great trade deal. Unbelievable. Uh, two weeks ago, the largest order of corn, the largest order of soybeans, the largest. Yeah, yeah. Except, except I feel different. Normally, I would have been here talking about the great trade. But you know what? The ink on the trade deal wasn't dry. And then all of a sudden, the plague came in from China. That's more important than trade deals. That's more important. So it's no good. With your vote, we will continue to bring back your jobs lower drug prices at a level that nobody's ever lowered them before. And you see, last year, for the first time ever, drug prices went down. But we're doing what's called the Favored Nations Clause. The drug companies are not happy with me. This is not supposed to have happened. Favored Nations means you'll pay the lowest price anywhere in the world. You match. It's Favored Nations. And nobody's exercised it, because nobody thought of it, probably. But if they did think of it, they couldn't have done it because the drug companies are so powerful. They are taking — you see all the ads on, against me? It's not so much Sleepy Joe. It's the drug companies, because I've exercised a favored nation. So if 
Germany or another country pays 10 cents for a pill, the exact pill, and we pay two and a half dollars, and you're talking about stuff like that. These are the kind of differences. We pay for all research and development, everything. So if Germany's at 10 or somebody, and we're at much higher, we now pay 10. It's very simple. It's called favorite nations. We pay the lowest in the world. Your prices could come down 50, 60, 70, 80 percent. They'll come down a lot. And uh, I have never had more ads spent because they have unlimited money. So Big Pharma, they call it, right? It's the number one power in Washington. And I've just learned they're the number one power. And I knew this was going to happen. I said, I don't care. I'm put here to do a job. I'm put here to do a job. They have the middlemen. You know, they have the drug pricing is very complicated. It's very complicated stuff. They have it set so that it's almost impossible to disengage it. And they have middlemen. You know the middlemen? Nobody ever heard. They never say middle women. I've never heard middle women. I want to be nice. I want to say middle women. But I've never heard the term having to do with drug prices. But they have the middlemen gets millions, gets more than the drug companies. At least the drug companies make the drugs, right? These people don't do anything. They're very rich. I probably know some of them. I would be not surprised if Hunter Biden was also a middleman. He probably got <laughs> On top of everything else, takes in millions and millions, and now we find out that Hunter Biden is a middleman. But these are rich people, and they get all this money for nothing. So I worked a deal where Canada, which buys their drugs for exactly 50 percent, I'm going to let our governors, your governor, Governor of Florida, other governors, buy, buy their drugs directly from Canada. Nobody's ever done the same drug, exactly the same, same lab, same company, same everything. And they're going to buy it for 50% less. And then by that time, the favored nations will kick in, and you'll get it for even less. So this has never happened before, but it's happening now. We will support our great police, protect your Second Amendment, defend your borders, and ensure more products are proudly stamped with that beautiful, isn't it a beautiful phrase? You didn't hear it for a long time until Trump came along. Made in the USA. Made in the USA. You didn't hear it for a long time, right? Been a long time. You know, when I was young, they used to say, made in America, made in the, every car, made in them. Now you don't see it anymore. We're going to see it. Remember, I was saying today, I was in North Carolina speaking to a great crowd, and I said, remember, I, when I first started, I said, we're going to say Merry Christmas again. Remember? And remember all the department stores. <laughs> Many of them are wiped out because of the internet, but these are minor details, right? But all the department stores, they'd say Happy New Year and everything but Christmas. They don't want to say Christmas. I said, we're going to say Christmas again. And you know what? They're all saying Christmas again. They're saying Merry Christmas. They're all saying Merry Christmas again. We're going to be there pretty soon. And we have a big day. You better get out November 3rd. Big, big, big. Who's voted already? Who's voted? I just voted. I just voted. Get out and vote. No, I tell you, this is the biggest election that I really believe maybe we've ever had because the radical left has gone crazy. And you know what? When we win this one, I think they're going to rest. I really do. I think they're going to say, okay, that's enough. That's enough. <laughs> she goes, no, they won't. <laughs> You're probably right. But you know what brings it together? Success. And we're doing a Super V. We're going up. You see housing starts and the numbers, the automobile starts. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. The numbers for some things are better than they were pre this plague that came in, the pandemic. I mean, it's amazing. Actually, the, amazing. We have a Super V. You're going to see a number that's going to be announced just prior to the election. GDP. It was just estimated by the Fed to be 35 percent. I think the highest we've ever had was like seven. Now, who knows if they're right? Maybe they're I'll take 25 right now, okay? Problem is, I mentioned 35, so if it's 25, you know what they'll do? It was a terrible, terrible upset for the president. Whatever. If it was 15, I'd be happy. They just estimated they think it might be 35 percent. It's unheard of. We're coming back because we built you know why, though? Because we built a strong foundation. We had a strong foundation. If we didn't, this country would be some mess. And if a guy like Biden gets in where he wants to raise your taxes quadrupled, and he wants to put all those ridiculous regulations that I, used to take 20 years to get approval for a highway, 
Now we got it down to two years, and I'm trying to get it down to one. I think we can. And it might not get built for safety reasons or environmental reasons, but we have it down to a very, very short period of time. It used to take, I mean, we have roads 21, 22 years, and then it would get disapproved. They would then raise their hands not to approve it after 20 years. No, no, those days are over. But he would put everything back. And he's going to raise, he's going to raise your taxes like crazy. I've never seen anyone, you know, all my life I've been involved indirectly, usually on the other side, only exclusively. I've never seen raising taxes. I've seen politicians, we will lower your tax. This is the first politician that's ever running saying he's going to quadruple your taxes. What the hell? This is the, cra this is the, cra I'm, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen. I mean, it's, I'm looking up, I'm saying, is this really like, is this serious? First of all, I look at him, I say, is, am I running against this man? I'm running against, I'm running against Sleepy Joe. In prime time, he wasn't good. Now I'm running against him. This is not prime time. Did you think he did well in the debate the other night? Yeah. The last question was the best though, right? Because he lied about fracking. He kept lying. He kept going during the primaries. There will be no fracking. There will be no fracking. By the way, you're a big fracking state. You better hope that he did. You've only got about a million. You've only got about a million jobs. More importantly than the jobs is you got the lowest energy prices we've had. How about your $2 gasoline and less? $2. What? You wouldn't mind if it went to $9, $10, $12. You couldn't get it. Well, they wouldn't mind because they'd like you to get rid of all your cars. No more airplanes. No more cars. No more cows. You know cows. I think they took that off the manifesto, right? It was too much. But they would like it. They would like it. No, what we're doing has been incredible. You can't have your tax increase. So I'm cutting taxes. We're doing another big tax cut. That's what brought everything in. Billions and billions of dollars has come into our country because of what we've done. What you're going to do is chase it all out. Goes. I mean, they're, you know, these are people without a lot of heart. They go where they make the deal. We brought it down. We brought the middle income taxes down. Child tax credit, $1,000 a child. He said he wants to get rid of it, okay? He wants to get rid of it. Why does he want to get rid of it? He... <laughs> that could only take place in the great state of Ohio. You know, I worked here for a couple of summers in Cincinnati. I like, I like Cincinnati. I like Ohio. I don't know. Worked out well. It was a good success. And you know, it's like uh, when something works out well, you like it. I was, I was very young. A job in Cincinnati, Swifton Village. Did anybody ever hear Swifton? Swifton. Anyway, and we bought it, and we sold it, and it worked out nice. And you know, you always have like a good feeling. But I have an even better feeling because of what happened four years ago with Ohio. Even better feeling. And it's going to happen again. But it's the first time I've ever seen a politician say, we will raise your taxes. I'm saying, wait a minute. Let's get it. Did he say, no, seriously, have you ever heard a politician campaigning going, I'm going to raise your taxes? And I'm going to put a lot more regulations, but a lot of people don't know. You know, I think the regulation cuts we did was actually more important, maybe not for everybody, but for the business people, and then they hire and jobs all over the place. You know, we had 160 million people working. We've never been anywhere close to that number. We're going to be back very soon. 11.4 million people hired over the last three months, which was a record. But I think the regulation cuts might have been even more important. This election is a choice between a Trump super recovery and a Biden, in my opinion, this is going to happen. I hate to say it. Depression. You're going to have a depression. And your 401ks, does anybody have a 401k? Throw them away. <laughs> They're not going to be worth it. It's a choice between a boom and a lockdown. Did you hear him during the debate, right? He said, I'd lock it down. Oh, yes, I'd like, no, no, we're not locking it down. No, no, we're not locking it. We've learned the disease. We did the right thing. We saved millions of lives. We saved two million lives, maybe more than that. We locked it, then we opened, but we understand it. Like young people, Barron, he had it. The doctor said, you know, Barron, very, very tall young man. And a great guy, right? But he's young. And the doctor said, Sir, Barron has tested positive. I said, That's terrible. Barron didn't even know he was. He said, Next day, the doctor comes in, Sir, Barron's fine. <laughs> because they're young, like these guys over here. They're young.
because they have strong immune systems, right? They're strong. They have these strong, beautiful immune systems, so it was good. Uh, I happened to test, right? You know why? I couldn't stay in a basement. I'd meet a lot of people. I'm president. I have to get out. I have to get out. No, it's true. I'd have meetings where I'd go back and say, you know, that's got to be dangerous. That's got to be this or that. But the fact is, I had it. It worked out well. Now I'm immune. I could run up and kiss this whole group of people, men and women. Uh, no, and it, it worked out. By the way, 99.9% .9 is good, and then you're immune and all that stuff. You know, I heard you were immune for life. So when I had it, I said, I'm immune to them, to the fake news. And they said, but only for four months. I heard it was for life. With me, it was for four months. If it was anybody else, it'd say for life. It's true. But anyway, no, I had it. First lady had it, right? And you get better. We got better. They love the first lady. It's so uh, very elegant. Most elegant, most elegant first lady. No, it's amazing. It's amazing. They uh, they don't treat her very nicely. And she's incredible. The most elegant woman. And she goes, but that is okay. She loves the people. I mean, it's it's really amazing. We love her. <laughs> Yeah, no, she's done a great job, and she loves it. And she loves the people, but she had it recovered. I had it recovered. Baron had it, didn't even know he had it. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's one of those things, but we have to lead your life. So when I would be having meetings with Gold Star families, military, lots of other people, I'd have meetings, right? And I'd go, and I'd do the meeting, and sometimes people would come up, and they cut close and everything else. Mask, no mask, they get close. And I'd leave some of these meetings and say, that could be dangerous, I guess. I don't know, you know. But I have to do my job. I, as I said at the debate, I can't put myself in the basement of the White House for a year and a half. I can't do it until this thing goes away. And it is going away. It's rounding the turn. Do you notice they talk about cases? Always cases, cases, cases. They don't talk about death. Mortality rate down 85% because what we have is so incredible. The job we've done is so incredible, 85%. Think of that, 85%. But they, they do it, and you know what? It's, on November 4th, you're not gonna hear the news. The CNN, all they talk about, COVID, 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 COVID. If, if a plane goes down with 500 people, they don't talk about it. All they talk because they're trying to scare everybody. You have to lead your life. And you have to get out. You have to be vigilant, be careful, socially distance. Yeah, get too close, put the mask on, put it on. You know, lots of different things. But, but really, I see what they're doing. It's so, it's just like they try to hide all of this corruption from the Biden family by not putting it. They refuse to write it. And I have to give the New York Post my Hometown paper, the New York Post, the oldest newspaper in the country, the fourth largest, I have to give them credit because they went against the grain and they're willing to expose all of this corruption. And then you see big tech, they won't put it on. And if you put it on, they delete you, they terminate you. Charlie Kirk, break up big tech. Well, they did sue Google. Nothing to do with this, of course, but they did sue Google on Thursday, right? You like it? No, terrible. No, no, but they've exposed themselves because nobody knew it was that serious. They won't put it on. And if you put it on, if you put something on from the New York, I think they, didn't they delete the New York Post? They terminated out the New York Post, right? Can you imagine a newspaper? They won't put it on. People have learned they don't want anything because if Biden got in, they would own the world. If Biden got in, China would own our country. I mean, China, did you see where the kid was trying to get $10 million a year for introduction purposes, okay? This was down, this is all down in the paper. They say, Russia did it. This is all down in a paper. Now confirmed by the guy that ran the company. He's, he's not, uh, I would say they're not too happy with him, would you say? <laughs> I saw him the other day, but it's all right stuff. I mean, what he's saying is right. He couldn't take it anymore. He couldn't stand the corruption. So let's see, but can you imagine when people say, don't print it. In other words, you'll never hear it. But you know, it ended up backfiring. Because that happened, it's become a much bigger story. Because you add it all up, it's actually become, if they would have printed it, who knows what would have happened? You forget it, something. 
but it's become a much bigger. Big tech, Section 230, right? Big tech is corrupt. It's corrupt. The media, the fake news is corrupt. And I've been saying it for a long time. Even I didn't know that you were that corrupt, but look at all of them. Even I didn't know that you were that corrupt. In the meantime, in the meantime, you watch the television sets go off. Let's cut, cut this guy off, cut the president off. Can you imagine they're broadcasting this stuff and now they're saying cut him off, but it's okay, I don't mind because I like telling the truth. Biden and the Democrats will offshore your jobs, dismantle your police departments, dissolve your borders, confiscate your guns, Second Amendment, they're after it. Eliminate your private health care. You know, we have 180 million people with private health care. A lot of you have private health care. It's what you dream of. It's great. You negotiate. You have many great companies doing it. They compete. You have great private health care. They want to terminate it. They want to terminate your religious liberty. They want to destroy the suburbs. I have the best thing that ever happened to the suburbs. You know, they were talking about this uh, 60 Minutes. She asked me a question. You saw that. I, put, I printed out the whole interview. I said, put it down. But she said to me a question, one of her questions. She said, why are you begging? Why? Suburban women. You said, please love me, suburban women. Please. Please love me. Please. I, I beg you, please love me, suburban No, I didn't say that. What I did is I said, love me, suburban women, because I've saved the suburbs. I've saved. They had a regulation. They had a regulation that would have brought low-income housing projects and crime right to their doorstep. Would have been right next to it. And I said, suburban women, you're going to love me. That's what I said. And I was being sick. They said, why are you begging for the love of suburban women? <laughs> suburban women are going to love me. You know why? Because they want security. They want safety. And they don't want a regulation that's going to destroy suburbia. That's all. That's all. Because they said, he's not doing well with suburban women. I said, what about suburban men? How am I doing? Well, there you're doing okay. You're doing well with the men, not the women. But Biden has vowed to abolish fracking, right? He says, we're going to not frack anymore. He has, no, he has no idea what it means. We are not, no fossil fuels, no nothing. We're going to close down all our factories. We're going to go with wind. Wind, wind is going to be the answer. Kills all our birds, everything else. We're going to have massive blackouts like they have in California, the whole country. You ever see the brownouts? Crippling power outages. 700,000 Ohio jobs would be destroyed. Biden lies about a lot of things. He lied about that. He lied about Social Security. You saw that. Social Security. He also won't tell you the truth about decades-long quest. He had a decades-long quest to renegotiate Social Security and Medicare. And he said he didn't do it. And we have a tape here someplace. Do we have the tape? I hope it works better than the Big Ten tape. OK? Play both videos. So we have one real quick. We have, I only do this for you. I to have respond. never said I oppose fracking. You, you said it I, on tape. I did show the tape. Put it on your website. I'll put it on. Put it on. Would there be any place for fossil fuels, including coal and fracking, in the Biden administration? Turn it up. No, we would, we would, we would work it out. We would make sure it's eliminated. What about, say, stopping fracking and stopping yes. new pipeline and yes. infrastructure? New and, pipeline, and, and, exactly. And, no new fracking. you got to transition away from it. Look, you're going to ban fracking all across America right now, right? I would love to. Yeah, I'd love to, too. I'd love to make sure we don't can't use any oil or gas, period. So look in my eyes. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, we're going to end fossil fuel. We're not going to get rid of fossil fuels. Okay, so there he said, no friend. Social yeah. security. You're right here with me. Yeah. Have you been on the floor of the Senate? You were in the Senate for a few years. Yeah. Time and time again, talking about the necessity, with pride, about cutting social security, cutting Medicare, cutting veterans programs. No. You never said that? No. When I argued that we should freeze federal spending, I meant Social Security as well. I meant Medicare and Medicaid. I meant veterans benefits. I meant every single solitary thing in the government. 
Look, look, here's the You're deal. You're an honest guy. Why don't you just tell the truth here? We all I, make mistakes. I, I am telling the truth. And I not only tried it once, I tried it twice, I tried it the third time, and I tried it the fourth time. Joe, let me repeat it again. I want you just to be straight with the American people. I am saying that you have been on the floor of the Senate time and time again talking about the need to cut Social Security, Medicare, and veterans programs. Is that true or is that no, not true? No, it's not true. What that is, is not true? That is not true. I meant veterans, but I meant every single solitary thing in the government. Everything was on the table. I did not support any of those cuts in Social Security or in veterans. Whoa, benefits. whoa, whoa. You, you, everything was on the table. All right, you're right. You just said it, including, in your judgment, cuts to Social Security and veterans. In order to get the kinds of changes we need on other okay. things related. Uh, Joe, but, just, didn't, but we did not cut it. I, I know, because people like me helped stop that. All that I would say to the American people, go to YouTube, it's all over the place. Joe said it many, many times. I'm surprised, you know, you can defend that or change your mind on it, but you can't deny the reality. <laughs> We're starting to use this very expensive means of communication because it's so much easier than my explaining it. <laughs> so, number one, he said there'll be no fracking, no fracking, no fracking. He luckily gets a nomination because Elizabeth Warren stayed in for an extra three days, right? If she would have left before Super Tuesday, he wouldn't have won one state. He would have been out. And then I would have been competing against Crazy Bernie instead, which is okay. I don't care. Well, there would have been more energy. I mean... You know, there would have been a lot more. Energy. No, Bernie has more energy. Smaller little face, maybe, but they have a lot of energy. They're, you know, they're coming to us because a lot of them, they agree with me so much on trade. We got a lot of them last time. But anyway, so no fracking. Then he goes to Pennsylvania. Great place. And he says, uh, yeah, you're going to have fracking. A million jobs. And, you know, they want to keep their bills down, right? The lighting bills and the gasoline. So all of a sudden, he goes from no fracking to, we will frack. And everyone said, how the hell? And the fake news doesn't call him out on it. They don't even talk to him about it. So I bring it up because that's good. It's expensive to do, but you know what? It's worth it for the great state of Ohio, right? Then, then we hear about Medicare and Social Security. So all my life I've heard, if you even touch Social Security, you're out of politics. This guy tried to destroy Social Security and Medicare. And Bernie caught him. I'd like to thank Bernie very much. You know, Bernie is, I, honestly, he's a good sport. He's one of the greatest losers in the history of politics. <laughs> Seriously. He lost viciously with Hillary and possibly shouldn't. I mean, I think she sort of beat him, but he was treated very badly. And then this time, he should have won, except that she said, I mean, what they did, they quadruple teamed him. And what they did to him was incredible. And he's got no hard feelings, you know? He just goes back. Bernie is a loser. I mean, I can't, I've never seen a guy like this. He loves to lose. Some people love to lose. Some people. As long as I'm your president, I will always protect Medicare and Social Security like I promised. And he won't. And he won't. And America will continue to be the number one producer of oil and natural gas anywhere in the world. You don't have to worry about me with your Ohio fracking. You frack to your heart's content. <laughs> By the way, and it's not up to him, just so you understand. No, it's not up to him. He switched. But his party is not going to let him frack, okay? They're not going to let him frack. And he's got no, his party, and he's probably not going to be in there too long anyway. You know, they've got the dream. They've got this Kamala, who is the most liberal person. And she said, there will never be fracking. Now she's saying, well, I think we can live with it. You know? No, no, no. Go with what they say first in politics. Go with what they say. That's where they come from. And they don't have a choice. She doesn't either. There's not going to be fracking if they win. There's going to be a lot of bad things happen, like socialized medicine. Like a lot of bad, a lot of bad things are going to happen. Joe Biden has made a corrupt bargain in exchange for his party's nomination. He has handed control of his party over to the socialists, I hate to say this, the communists, the Marxists, and the left-wing extremists that you see running up and down the street 
doing tremendous damage in Portland and various places, that we could stop at Antifa. You're right, Antifa. I said, Joe, tell us about Antifa, Joe. Oh, that's just an idea. Really? When you get hit over the head with a baseball bat, that's not an idea. No, he doesn't want to talk about Antifa. I said, Joe, I haven't been endorsed by almost every law enforcement group in the country. Almost everyone. Sheriffs, police. New York City's finest. They've taken all of that, you know, great vim and that enthusiasm. What they've done in New York is terrible. All run by Democrats, all run by radical left Democrats, or even Democrats. You look at what's happened to New York crime-wise. You look at what happened to Chicago. Look at Portland. Look at Portland. Look at Oakland. Look at Baltimore. By the way, you know, Obama talks like his administration. He had stuff. How about Baltimore? How about Oakland? How about Ferguson? How about St. Louis? What he, what he had, and it's like I said, that's why I'm here. I'm here because people were not happy. They're running a slate of the most radical candidates in American history. They are running the most radical people, AOC plus three, AOC. How about AOC? How about in Minnesota, beautiful Minnesota, Omar, Il Ilhan Omar. She's always complaining about the way we run our country. No. I think we're going to win. You know, Minnesota hasn't been won by a Republican since 1972. Does anybody know that? I think we're going to win Minnesota. First of all, we did a very good job with Minneapolis. You know, that National Guard went in. No, they should have called them two weeks. They have to, we have to get a call. We're not allowed to send them in unless we want to do something much tougher than that, which you don't want to do. But we have to get a call, so we get a call. But the National Guard went in. In a half an hour, the whole thing was, wasn't that a beautiful, to me, it was a beautiful sight. Boom, boom. To me, it was a beautiful sight. They lined up and they just started walking and that was the end of that. They should have been called a week and a half earlier. They could have saved a lot of, a lot of people and a lot of buildings and a lot of area. If Biden wins, the flag burning rioters on the streets will be running your federal government. You know, I signed into law when the statues were coming down, the monuments. And at first, they were monuments of people we never heard of. And then they were mon And I said, you know what? You let them get away, they'll be wanting to take down monuments of George Washington. Everyone laughed. They thought it was funny. I said, I'm not kidding. And they did. If I weren't president, you would have monuments taken down all over the city of Lincoln, of Washington, of Jefferson. They were going for the Jefferson Memorial. Can you believe this? And we have a mayor in D.C. who formed a commission with recommendations. Her recommendation is take down the Washington Monument, close up the Lincoln Monument. No, no, these are serious. You, you read about it. I said, no, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you, Madam Mayor. We're going to keep the Washington Monument just the way it is. These people, these people are crazy. You know, I went to Mount Rushmore, made a speech. Everybody, I don't know if you saw my speech, but people like my Mount Rushmore. But you know why they liked it? Because it was so beautiful. And behind me were these massive, this mountain that's carved so beautifully. It's beautiful. South Dakota, beautiful. And I'm making a speech. And then I realized they want to take down Mount Rushmore. No, it's not happening. By the way, don't tell that to the people. Don't tell that to the people of South Dakota. They're not going to be. But these people, so, you know, so when I, when I saw the thing with the statues and with the monuments all over the country, I said, we need a strong, we need a strong, strong law, not with this Congress we have now where, you know, one day would be too much. And we took out an old law, and it says 10 years in prison if you knock down a monument. Right? And I reinstituted, I reenacted it, I signed it. And they were coming in Washington. They wanted to knock down quite a few of our beautiful monuments, including one of Abraham Lincoln. And you remember Jackson. They had the ropes, but the police went in, did a great job. They did a phenomenal job. They went in. These police, they went in. They were unbelievable. That's true. Remember, they had the ropes. They were ready. They were starting to pull it. And the police, and they're pretty rough guys, but the police went in, and they're much rougher. It was over so fast. 
It was over so fast. Andrew Jackson, who was a great general and a good president, maybe a very good president, take it down. Andrew Jackson, a great Battle of New Orleans, a great general and a very good president. They want beautiful, right opposite the White House. They wanted to pull it down. They were ready. And the police went in, and the police did a great job. They did a great job. But I said, we need something. So we signed something that says 10 years. And you know, they were going to march the following day. They were going to have thousands of people come to rip down statues in Washington. And we informed them it's 10 years in jail, 10 years in prison. They actually use the term prison because it's a tougher term, right? It's in prison. Today, they don't use that term. Today, they use much nicer terms. It says 10 years in prison. If you knock down a monument, do anything to damage a monument or a statue. So what happened is they heard about it. And they came in. There were only 24 people. It was supposed to be tens of thousands. 24 people. And they looked around. And the 24 people said, let's get the hell out of here 10 years. <laughs> and that was the end. That was the end of it. It's amazing. It's amazing what the, what the pen can do, right? The pen. But you couldn't go to Congress today and get that because they don't think this way. You know, today they don't think. Today they say, well, you have to have — it's freedom of speech. Knocking down a statue, it's freedom of speech. You can let them do whatever they want to do. Can't do that. Can't do that. So it's uh, — the federal government's been doing a great job. Now the state governments have to get tougher. And the state governments have to call in the federal government when they have a problem. It's very simple. The mayor is right. They could use some help. The first thing they'll do if they win — this office, and I don't think it's going to happen based on everything I'm seeing, is they're going to pack the Supreme Court with far-left judges who will eliminate your Second Amendment. And if, uh, if you happen to be pro-life, you can forget that. You can forget that. They will change. They will change everything. They will change it. You know, we took our time. I have three Supreme Court justices. We have a great one coming. A great one coming. Three great ones. You know, many presidents have had none. Think of it. And me, their worst nightmare has three. <laughs> their heads are exploding, you know, the extra. No, but just of equal importance, in my opinion, by the time, by the end of my first term, we'll have 300, give or take a little bit, 300 federal judges, including Puerto Rico. 300. A record. It's a record. No, it's a record. So think of that. 300 federal judges, I think close to 60 Court of Appeals judges, and three Supreme Court justices. I mean, can you believe it? Even I can't believe it. Even I. It's a record. If I don't sound like a typical Washington politician, it's because I'm not a politician. And if I don't always play by the rules of the Washington establishment. It's because I was elected to fight for you, and I am fighting for you harder than any president has ever fought. So we're joined today by a couple of our good friends, State Auditor Keith Faber. Where's Keith? Keith. Good job, Keith. See the shadows. Thank you. So Keith has done a great job, and uh, thank you very much, Keith, for being here. We appreciate it. That cheering was for you, Keith, I think. Was that for Keith? State Supreme Court Justices Judy French and Sharon Kennedy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Judge. And a person that, right at the beginning, she was with us. She was right there, and she's fantastic. GOP Chairwoman Jane Timken. Great, Jane. How are we doing, Jane? How does it compare to four years ago? She goes more so. Even more enthusiasm. I mean, it's true. Even more enthusiasm. They're going to find out on November 3rd. It's going to see, oh, remember four years ago, that great evening? Was that one of the greatest evenings? 
They said, this will be a very, very short evening for Donald Trump. Then they say, Donald Trump has won the state of Florida. Whoa, what's that all about? Donald Trump has won the state of Ohio. What the hell is going on? <laughs> Donald Trump has won. They had North Carolina. They said, that's their stopgap. That's the one. Donald Trump has just won the state of North Carolina. Huh? Then Georgia, South Carolina, and we won. We just swept that whole place. And then we came in with Michigan, hadn't been won in decades and decades. And we came in with Wisconsin, hadn't been won in a long time. And it was like one of the most beautiful evenings, wasn't it? And then they talk about, if you lose, will this be a friendly transition? And I said, let me ask you a question. When I won, did they give me a friendly transition? They spied on my campaign. They did all this stuff. That was not a friendly transition, was it, huh? I also want to recognize Pickaway County Commission and Ohio State football legend. Oh, Champ Henson. Where the hell is Oh, good-looking guy. You look like you could play tomorrow, champ. Boy, he's a hell of an athlete. Great. That's great. Champ led the nation in scoring when he played for the great Woody Hayes at Ohio State. Right? Right. That looks good. Handsome guy. Woody Hayes was easy to play for, wasn't he? He was a nice guy. <laughs> he goes, no, he wasn't. That's okay. He was great, though, wasn't he, huh? He got it. You know what? He got it done, right? He got it done. Great. Nice to see you, champ. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. For decades, our politicians spent trillions of dollars rebuilding foreign nations, right? They would spend money on these foreign nations that didn't give a damn for us, fighting foreign wars and defending foreign borders. But now, we are finally protecting our nation we are rebuilding our cities, and we are bringing our jobs, our factories, and our troops back home to the USA. Our troops are all coming back. Got to fight the deep state all the time. No, but our troops are all coming back. Afghanistan, 19 years. Would you say that's enough, right? And we're policemen over there. We're police. We're, we're policemen over there. Under my administration, we built the greatest economy in the history of the world. And now, very simply, we are doing it again. We built it. We had to close it down unbelievably. I, can't, I couldn't believe when they came to my office. And we had to close it down. We did the right thing. We saved all those lives. Now we're reopening it. And we're doing it at a level that nobody's ever seen before. In my first three years, we increased family income. You know, it's called Make America Great Again, right? Like they had Make America Great Again. But now I say, Make America great again, again. Make America great again, again. We increased family income over $6,000, more than five times the gains in all eight years. So we did it in three years under the past administration. Think of that, five times more. African-American unemployment, Hispanic-American unemployment, and Asian-American unemployment all reached their lowest levels in the history of our country. All unemployment. I mean, I've seen so many forms of unemployment with a high school diploma, without a high school diploma, an MBA, a college degree, graduating number one at MIT. Everybody was doing better. Women doing unbelievably, unbelievably, breaking every record. But we had to slow it down, close it up, save those lives, understand this horrible virus that was sent to us by China, but sent to the whole world, sent to the whole world. They stopped it from going into other parts of China, but it came to the U.S. and Europe and all over the world. And we can never forget it. We can never forget it. After the virus hit, we've recovered faster than any major nation on Earth. We've recovered faster economically since April. Since April, we created a record 11.4 million jobs. This week, I signed an order to protect the pensions of workers of Delphi Corporation. Do we have any of those workers here? You are so lucky I'm president. There's like two people here. 
You are so lucky that I'm president. But when General Motors went bankrupt, Biden and Obama threw these workers really to the wolves. Their pensions were totally wiped out. Their families were left in disarray. It was a terrible thing. So my order is the first step to restoring the pensions and health care benefits promised to workers in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Ohio. And congratulations and so on. No, they were treated very unfairly. They were treated and they were promised all sorts of things, and then as usual, nothing happened. I will never let anyone rip off our great American worker. We're not gonna let them rip it off. And they they have been doing that for a long time. Joe Biden says buy American. But he spent 47 years in Washington sending our jobs to foreign countries. And you'll also notice he never says hire American. Did you ever notice that? That's because his plan is to hire foreign workers. He wants open borders and he wants unlimited illegal aliens coming in. We don't know who they are. So that leaves no jobs for the Americans. So we have that straightened all out. It's all done. Don't worry about it. Don't get upset. In fact, he's vowed to terminate all of the protections that I've given to the American worker. I've given you a lot of protections. To save our auto industry, I withdrew from the horrible Trans-Pacific Partnership. It would have been the worst. I ended the NAFTA nightmare, one of the worst trade deals, probably the worst trade deal. Everyone said that would be — it would be impossible to do, and proudly signed the brand-new USMCA into law, Mexico, Canada. And by the way, it just kicked in. The difference is unbelievable. You know how I know it's good? Because those two countries aren't quite as happy as we are. But NAFTA was a disaster. We lost 60,000 factories went to different countries. It's terrible. It was terrible. It was a terrible thing to have signed. And everybody said it would be impossible to terminate. I terminated it. And we have the USMCA, which is great, great for us. And it makes it very, very tough. And the wall is almost complete. The wall. He says, build the wall. It's a great thing. You know, they don't talk. The press doesn't talk about the wall anymore because it's all built. It's going to be very, very soon. It's going to be completed. And it has created such an unbelievable Strong border. You have no idea. And I, Mexico also. Mexico's given us 27,000 — think of that — 27,000 soldiers to protect our border. I said, you have to do it. You have to do it, because it's not right. And we don't have people. Remember when I came in? Remember the caravans coming in? They were coming in. Thousands and thousands of people were trying to come in. I said, you can't do it. You don't hear about — you don't hear about any of these stories anymore. You don't hear about the wall anymore. You used to hear it used to be wall, 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 because they never thought I'd get it built. You know? Once you're a developer in New York City, this is easy. <laughs> now we got it financed. Mexico will be paying for it because we're going to charge a fee at the base. So it's very simple. But they've been great. Mexico's treated us very well. They didn't used to treat us well, but now they treat us well. Joe Biden has vowed that he wants open borders mass amnesty and free health care for all illegal immigrants coming in. And that was another tape he had, right? When they said they had, like, you know, 16, 17 of these super radical left people running on the Democrat side. <laughs> that wasn't so bad. I was waiting. I was waiting. I could hear that. That wasn't, that wasn't that bad. That's good. Because you got a lot of people watching you on television, you know. But remember, they said, uh, who is going to pay? Who is going to give health care to illegal immigrants coming into the country? And they all raised their hand. Everybody raised their hand except Joe, because he's been doing it for 47 years. He knew it was not a good thing. So he did the shoulder, remember? <laughs> and then he got the hand up. I said, ah, I just won. Because you can't do it. You know, the problem is, look, we all have a heart. But if you do that, you're going to have tens of millions of people pouring into our country for health care, for college, for school. They want to give free school, free education. They want to give the new one. They want to give free lawyers to everybody that enters our country illegally. Do you believe? That's down in the manifesto with Bernie. That's between Bernie, those two characters you saw up there, Bernie and Joe, Sleepy Joe. Bernie got taken further left. Can you believe it? Bernie is supposed to be taken to the right. He took Joe further left than anything he ever did, the manifesto, we call it. 
Biden's also pledged to terminate all national security travel bans. You know, I got travel bans, if it's okay with you, because I didn't like people that want to come in and blow up our country, okay? So, and I got it passed. Wasn't easy. That was not easy. That was a bad one. That was a tough one. They thought I was a per bad person. No, I want people to come into our country who love our country, who can help us. Not people that want to blow up things and kill people, but travel bans and increase. They want to increase refugees. This is an agreement with Bernie Sanders. Increase refugees 700 percent, opening the floodgates to radical Islamic terrorism. No, thank you. No, thank you. We appreciate it, Joe. Thank you very much, but no thanks. I'm keeping the terrorists, jihadists, and violent extremists out of our country, if that's okay. We invested $2.5 trillion in the U.S. military, including more than $6 billion in contracts. Oh, for Lima. You know Lima, the Army tank plant? Lima, right? You know, I did that when I was here. That was going to close, that plant. And I heard I was president-elect, so I had nothing to do for a little while, you know? There was a little time. I didn't know I was being spied on. <laughs> so I had nothing to do, and I heard about this tank plant, and I had some friends, a lot of friends in Ohio, and they said about this tank plant that they, Jim Jordan, the great Jim Jordan, do we love? Right, he's one of them. You know, Jim Jordan was a great NCAA wrestling champion, too. He was great. It was great. Jim Jordan is a great warrior, I will tell you that. Nobody like him. But it's true, Jim Jordan and others, they said, we have to we have to save this plant. I said, let me take a look. So I actually went to Lyman. I saw this plant. And it's, it's the only plant now that makes army tanks and a level of sophistication. You wouldn't believe it. And I went through. I'm good at this stuff. I went through the plant. I said, if we ever close this plant, you'll never be able to get the skill, the talent, or a facility to do this. I'm not going to buy our tanks from China, okay? We were close to that in the steel world, okay? You know, let's buy our steel from China. No, thank you. You know, there are certain industries we have to have, and we brought that back. So I said, no, I'm not going to let this be closed. And I stopped it. And we are making tanks at a record level, all made in the USA. We're making it at a record level. And, and you're right, Jim Jordan was very helpful. You would have never been able to replace that plant, this big, incredible, sprawling place. And they, uh, they make these tanks. They're so sophisticated. You wouldn't believe it when you see. I look inside. I said, no, thanks. I don't have to go inside. I don't need that. You know who tried that? Dukakis. That didn't work out. Too. I'm slightly larger than him. I might have had the opposite problem, OK? But he didn't look good. That was not a good picture with him with the helmet. Does anybody remember? Dukakis. He was up 10. After that picture, he was down 15. He went down 20. No, I don't have to go into the tank. But I did happen to look in, and I said, that's like a complex machine. That's incredible what you do. And I said, we can't close this plant. You'll never be able to reproduce this. And uh, we didn't close it. So, you know, it's uh, one of a lot of great decisions I think we've made for our military and for the people, and also for the people of Ohio. And we took over 100 percent of the ISIS caliphate. You saw that? Syria and Iraq. And for years, they were after this bloodthirsty killer. And they were after They could never find him, but we found him. We killed the leader, founder of ISIS, al-Baghdadi. We killed him. And then we took out the mass murder of American troops and many other people. Soleimani is dead. I withdrew from the last administration's disastrous Iran nuclear deal, one of the dumbest deals. And I recognized the true capital of Israel and opened the American embassy in Jerusalem. And instead of never-ending wars, you see, we just signed yesterday another one, Sudan. So we have Bahrain, Sudan, and the United Arab Emirates, red really led by a great leader, Mohammed, a great leader. And uh, 
We're getting peace without blood all over the sand. It's going to happen. We have many other countries that want to come in. Many other countries want to come into that deal. We'll have peace. I did more in 47 months than Sleepy Joe Biden did in 47 years. It's true. A vote for Republicans is a vote for safe communities, great jobs, a limitless future for all Americans. Really, it's a vote for the American dream. That's what it is. We're for the American dream. I'm for the American dream. The Republicans will be with us. And in conclusion, over the next four years, we will make America into the manufacturing superpower of the world. We've already started. We will end our reliance on China once and for all. That's already happened. We will hire more police, increase penalties for assaults on law enforcement, and we will ban deadly sanctuary cities. We will uphold religious liberty, free speech, and the right to keep and bear arms. We will strike down terrorists who threaten our citizens, and we will keep America out of the ridiculous, endless foreign wars, if that's okay. Keep them out. We've created the greatest military in the world. You know, we are the equipment that we bought, 2.5 trillion, 2.5. That was much easier to get, frankly, and the Democrats didn't want to give anything. But that was much easier to get, believe it or not, than the wall. They didn't want the wall. They said the wall is old-fashioned. They wanted drones flying around so you could watch people pour into our border, okay? <laughs> and you know, I've been saying it a lot because it's true. There are two things that will never get obsolete, a wall and a wheel, right? I said, the wall? And that wall is, it just has stopped them. But what we've done is we've created two and a half trillion, with a T, trillion dollars. We have the greatest jet fighting planes, tankers, missiles, rockets, submarines. We have greatest weapon in the world, submarines, greatest, most powerful weapons in the world. Our nuclear arsenal is fixed and ready, and, and only hope to God we never have to use it. But you know what? We're much less likely to have to use it because right now we have things, the hydrosonic missiles, super, I call them the super-duper missiles, where go seven times the speed of a normal quick missile. I mean, these things are amazing. And, you know, Russia took things that we had during the Obama administration from our great scientists and engineers, and they built — they have hydrosonic, but we have hydrosonic now. They're the fastest in the world. We needed all of this stuff. We have the greatest equipment. We are the envy of the world, whether it's Russia, China, North Korea. We have the greatest equipment. We have the greatest people. We have the greatest warriors. But our warriors needed the equipment. And when I came into office in my first short period of time, one of the world's most overrated generals told me, sir, we don't have ammunition. I said, that should never be said to another president again. And now we have so much ammunition, we don't know what to do with it. So we have totally rebuilt our military, the finest equipment anywhere in the world, nothing even close. No other country has anything even close. The fake news was saying, you shouldn't be saying that. You're giving confidential information. That's okay. I'll say it. There's nobody — can you imagine that? They wanted to even call me on that. Maybe they should impeach me for making that statement. Okay. <laughs> and we will ensure peace through strength. We will end surprise medical billing, require the biggest thing there is, price transparency. Remember I said it. Kicks in on January 1st. It's bigger than health care. Wait till you see what you can do when you have transparency, where you can negotiate with your doctors, your hospitals, etc. Lower drug prices, as I said, favored nations. And even more, we will always protect patients with pre-existing conditions. Always. Always. We will stop the radical indoctrination of our students and restore patriotic education to our schools. And we will teach our children to love our country, honor our history, and always respect our great American flag.
And so importantly, we will live by the timeless words of our national motto, in God we trust. Come in. For years, you had a president who apologized for America. Now you have a president who is standing up for America and standing up for the great people of Ohio. Thank you. You know, Biden used to say that he's made a lot of mistakes because he was never sure where the hell he was, right? <laughs> so let's say like that line, sort of like maybe a lesser version of it. And standing up for the great people of uh, Florida. Say, no, there are no palm trees. No, he did that about seven times, right? You know, once you do that, walk off the stage, no matter how good a speech you give, it's no good. You just walk off the stage, standing up for the great people of Idaho. He had Iowa and Idaho, and he couldn't figure it out. This is not what we need. For the last four years, you have seen me fight for you, and now I am relying on you to deliver another historic victory for our country. Go through Ohio. Vote early. Bring your friends, your families, your neighbors, your co-workers. Get your boss to go. I don't care. But you have to get out and vote. Everybody has to get out and vote. From Akron to Columbus, from Dayton to Cleveland, from Cincinnati to right here in Circleville, we stand on the shoulders of red-blooded American patriots who poured out their heart, their sweat, their soul to secure our liberty and to defend our freedom. We inherit the legacy of American heroes who crossed the oceans, blazed the trails, settled the continent, tamed the wilderness, laid down the railroads, dug out the Panama Canal, raised up the great skyscrapers, won two world wars, defeated fascism and communism, and made America the single greatest nation in the history of the world. And the best is yet to come. Best is yet to come. Proud citizens like you help build this country, and together we are taking back our country. We are returning power to you, the American people. That's what this has all been about. With your help, your devotion, and your drive, we are going to keep on working, we are going to keep on fighting, and we are going to keep on winning, winning, winning. We are one movement. One people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together with the incredible people of Ohio, we have made America powerful again, military. We have made America wealthy again, stock market. We have made America strong again. We have made America proud again. We have made America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you, Ohio. Go out.